This video is made possible by KiwiCo. More on them later. Can humans see Wi-Fi? No, definitely not. Otherwise, your evening browsing habits would have blinded half the neighborhood by now. Wi-Fi is the name that we gave the tech priest magic that allows us to download cat videos literally through the air. But what is it really? What's coming out of the magic pixie box that we plug into the special wire in our house? The short answer is light, or more accurately, a type of electromagnetic radiation called microwaves. And yes, I do mean the same kind of microwaves that you use to reheat a day-old burrito. This is why in the old days, running a microwave could mess with the internet connection. If the oven was leaky, it would broadcast random noise at the same wavelength the Wi-Fi router was trying to use. Microwaves, like all electromagnetic radiation, have a frequency that they oscillate at. For example, an FM radio station's emissions are around the 80 to 100 megahertz range. A Wi-Fi router, or your kitchen microwave, oscillate at about 2.4 gigahertz. And visible light is all the way up at 450 to 750 terahertz. While our sad caveman eyeballs are limited to a very minimal patch of the electromagnetic spectrum, light is light, so in theory you could build a camera that could see almost any part of the spectrum for you. And we actually already do this for microwave signals. Our universe is filled with giant things in space that scream out in microwave frequencies. Pulsars, nebula, gas jets, quasars, and more. If you build a really big antenna and then pick a frequency you're interested in and wave it around measuring how much radio power you measure in each location, you can build up images of the cosmos. We've even used this to take a picture of a black hole now. This is called radio astronomy. If we had a tiny radio telescope and tune it to Wi-Fi's frequency, theoretically we could do the same thing, but take a picture of all the Wi-Fi emitters in an area. To that end, allow me to introduce XJ9. While it may look like the sort of thing that would give a Raytheon executive a stiffy, it's actually our latest iteration of a radio telescope. Though it does still feel a little intimidating when you're being scanned. XJ9 is what happens when an actual engineer with a budget designs the radio telescope instead of a broke scientist. It's got proper geared stepper motors, belt drive, nice 3D printed parts, and a proper flat bearing. And of course, the head is swappable, allowing us to sub out the antenna for different experiments. Compare XJ9 to Cogsworth, the first iteration of a Wi-Fi camera I built many years ago. Held together with spit, duct tape, and prayers to the deep old ones, he was designed and built entirely by hand, out of whatever random crap I happen to find lying around. But through all that jank, he held together just long enough to take a couple of pictures of the Wi-Fi router in the workshop, and find a bunch of my neighbor's routers by scanning the building. While his efforts were valiant, Cogsworth was eventually taken behind the woodshed, and his head now lives on my wall as a science trophy. In his stead, XJ9 is ready to step in and do all the things I dreamed Cogsworth might. When I made Cogsworth, I had originally intended to open source the design, but honestly, it was so bad that I just couldn't stand to afflict the world with more of him. But XJ9, on the other hand, will have all of her build plans on GitHub. XJ9 is largely 3D printed, but we did have to laser cut a few pieces for the base. This means that if you want an XJ9 for yourself, you're going to need a few specialty tools. But you won't need any tools to assemble this next part. This is one of the amazing learning crates from the sponsor of this video, KiwiCo. If you haven't heard of them before, KiwiCo is a subscription service where each month you get one of these delightful boxes of fun and learning. Inside this particular box was an incredibly well-designed set of pieces and instructions to build a customizable and adjustable tippy-tilt maze game. KiwiCo's crates are designed for kids, but I was shocked at how much fun I had putting this together. I wish all of my science projects were this much of a joy to assemble. The instructions made everything super easy to follow, and the kit packs so many different concepts into one set. Also, it was quite the sight watching every single member of my crew, all grown adults, get distracted at some point in the day playing with the finished maze. So if you have kids, or maybe just want to get the perfect gift for your niece or nephew, this really is the gift that keeps on giving. All of my favorite toys as a kid were sets that you got to build something that was usable later that you get to keep playing with. And with KiwiCo Clubs, you'll get a new box of delight every month. And there's something for every age group and interest. I especially recommend the KiwiCo Labs sets, as they're focused on science and engineering, and is the lineup that the Tippy Maze is from. All you have to do is choose one of the five clubs, Panda, Sprout, Labs, World, or Studio, depending on your interests, and then pick a payment schedule and wait for your first crate to arrive. 
So after this video, head over to KiwiCo.com slash Thought Emporium or use the coupon code Thought Emporium to get 50% off your first crate. Now, back to the rest of the build. XJ9, or Jenny to her friends, is fundamentally an alt-azimuth robot, meaning it can either tilt its face up and down or rotate around its base to point in different directions. Since her face is removable, we can swap out the antenna depending on what frequency we want to look at. Though, that's not to say she has to have an antenna for a face. A knife also happens to fit nicely, so she can help out in the kitchen and terrify my dinner guests. Or I can strap a laser pointer on here and use it to distract the neighbor's dog while I rearrange their furniture to make them think their house is haunted. Anyway, an antenna is, for the most part, an inert piece of funny-shaped metal. So to turn the radio waves that hit the antenna into usable data, we're going to be using a software-defined radio, or SDR. These are digital radios that connect to a computer and can be tuned to whatever frequency we want. We tried two different models, a Hack RF and a Lime SDR, and found that the Hack RF was more reliable for this. To take a picture, what we're going to do is move the antenna around and at each location record the intensity of radio waves we receive, just like radio astronomy. By plotting each intensity as a pixel for each location, we can build up an image as we scan the area. We can either do a big wide scan to take a full image, or we can just do a simple arc if all we're interested in is the direction the signal is coming from. So we set about trying to take a picture of our router, which seemed like it would be a simple task. After all, Cogsworth was made literally out of garbage and managed this on its first go. We'd also learned from last time and had simplified the code so that as soon as the scan was done, out popped an image. And the results were... crap. If anything, it looked like there was a dead spot where the router was, and good signal everywhere else. So we tweaked the code and ran it again, taking more samples this time at each step so that way we had a better average of how much power was being received. And again, junk. We tweaked and scanned and tweaked and scanned literally for days, and every time, junk. If we tried just measuring the signal-to-noise ratio, we got signal in a weird spot. If we directly measured the power, we got signal in a different incorrect location. We spent days waving the antenna around and tweaking things. It was honestly infuriating. I was starting to feel like that scene in Iron Man. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave! With a bunch of scraps! In the process of figuring this out, we started to suspect that the walls were the problem. And I know that sounds insane, but bear with me. Most walls in a normal Canadian residential building are framed in wood, then covered in drywall. Or sometimes they're made of brick. This means that they are basically transparent to Wi-Fi, which is why you get relatively good signal throughout the house. But not all buildings are made the same, and not all materials are transparent to Wi-Fi. I mean, think about it. Wi-Fi and your microwave are the same frequency. Why does one stay inside the box and one spreads out over the whole area? The short answer is metal or anything conductive, but metal being extremely dense on top of being conductive certainly doesn't hurt. A microwave oven is, well, an oven. It's a sealed, conductive, grounded box. So the microwaves just bounce around inside. Our building, for reasons that are only known to the builders and the old gods, was built using weird steel studs instead of wood. I was contemplating making a hole in the wall to demonstrate this, but my landlord advised against it. Not only does this make renovations a nightmare, it also makes the walls actually kind of reflective to Wi-Fi signals. And a shop full of large bits of metal equipment, cables, and piping could feasibly be causing all kinds of reflections. So we're detecting not just the direct signal from the router, but all the light bouncing around the room. So in an act of desperation to figure out why this wasn't working, we set the router up in a tree and just scanned that. It took a little bit of finagling, but we finally got something that made sense. Big bright spot right where we expected it, and we can scan off to one side, we see that the spot moves accordingly. Perfect, this is exactly what we wanted. Okay, great, this is solved, right? Nope. Spin her around to name it the normal router again, and once again, we don't see it. And to add insult to injury, when we brought Jenny to the place we originally tested Cogsworth, which is definitely made of wood, she couldn't see that router either. This left us scratching our heads and confused, all the while days are flying by and this video was becoming dangerously overdue. And then it clicked. The program we're using for the radio side of this is called GNU Radio. It allows us to make these cool flow graphs that let you control the radio signals and the incoming data and process it immediately. Buried in one of our code blocks was a setting that was throttling the gain based on how much signal was coming in. So instead of getting a true power measurement, it was trying to compensate in dim areas, which completely ruins the experiment. 
We also found that routers are actually on the whole pretty dim light sources. While they can transmit a lot, they usually don't, and instead are so efficient that they only need very short bursts to keep the cat videos streaming to your phone. So to make our lives much easier, we had every member of our crew run a speed test on their various devices while we were taking a scan. And sure enough, with all of those tweaks, a scan finally showed the router properly. I'd been getting worried that we were going to end up having to remodel XJ9 into something Raytheon might actually be interested in, just so that this project wasn't a huge loss. That does finally bring me to a bigger why. Why did we build XJ9 in the first place? Well, beyond the obvious stated reasons and because it seemed like a fun idea. Jenny was meant to be a platform for bigger and more interesting projects. What we've just demonstrated is an incredibly simplistic form of passive radar. With Jenny, we can see where the router is, but it's like taking a picture of a light bulb. What would be far more interesting would be to use the Wi-Fi as a light source to illuminate other things so we can see them. Basically, using Wi-Fi to see through walls instead of seeing Wi-Fi through the walls. And we should be able to use Jenny to make 3D maps of an area by just picking the right light source. Now with the bugs worked out of the system and a reliable, stable, and repairable platform to work from, we can finally tackle the hard parts. And the radio astronomy I mentioned earlier is also on the table. In another very old video, we used a radio telescope like this to take a picture of the geosynchronous band of satellites. That's the ring of satellites that orbits at just the right distance to appear as though they're always in the same spot in the sky. Think communication satellites, TV satellites, weather satellites, that sort of thing. But with Jenny, we should be able to take a much nicer picture and see even more satellites. And beyond that, we can find all kinds of other cool stuff in space and on land by just choosing the right antenna and amplifier. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. But to finish off this video, we took one more scan and got a very cool result. When we look at the graph, we see a strange shape. If I take it into Photoshop, I can do a little CSI zoom and enhance, and when I do, we see a coupon code. That's right, it's holiday season and our store is bursting with new and exciting items. And if you use the code Jenny, you'll get 10% off your order. Not only do we have all new Don't Build the Torment Nexus apparel, we also just added the first of a new line of designs we're going to be releasing. This is the first of what we're calling our Science Tarot series. It's currently available as a poster, but will be available on apparel soon. And of course, we still have our other handmade posters and catalog of amazing designs to show off your mad science flair. So head over to thethoughtemporium.ca and snag something today. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for our monthly newsletter to get the latest news from our house of man-made horrors. We're getting ready to add DNA and other biologicals to our store, so you'll be the first to know when we do. And of course, before we go, I also need to say a huge thank you to our amazing patrons and channel members that make these videos possible. Patrons and members also get access to our supporter Discord, so if that's something that interests you or you just want to support our work, there's some links below. But that's all for now, and we'll see you next time.